In recent years, I've noticed the difference between the various atheists here on YouTube in terms of talking about the evidence for things like the existence of God, the miracles of Jesus, and of course his resurrection. There are a number of folks like me who will say that there is no evidence, where others will specifically say that there's no good or compelling evidence. I want to take a minute to clarify why I'm on the no evidence team for these various claims. And let's start right there. I don't consider claims to be evidence, especially when those claims invoke the supernatural. Even firsthand eyewitness testimony is notoriously unreliable. And we don't have anything even slightly approaching that for things like the resurrection or the exodus. Nor do I believe arguments to be evidence. In fact, one of the most important understandings humans have ever come to leading to the scientific revolution is that arguments can be absolutely spot on and dead wrong. Arguments are, for all intents and purposes, hypotheses for which additional, supporting, empirical evidence demonstrating an argument's reliability is required. But mostly, I say there's no evidence for these various supernatural claims because I... I hate to say it, but I somehow find myself in lockstep agreement with someone else who has extremely high standards in terms of evidence. God. And yes, it's strange to find myself in complete agreement with this arch enemy of mine. But God does not simply make claims. God does not simply make arguments. God brings the power and the glory for all to see, unambiguously, without reservation. And he's not the least bit shy or hesitant in doing so. He seems, or at least he seemed, to revel in it. The God standard is simple. Supernatural claims demand supernatural evidence. And God delivers. Or at least he used to before the advent of fact checkers. God, for example, didn't give Moses some unverifiable claims through an anonymous third party decades later to present to Pharaoh. God didn't give Moses some fancy philosophical arguments to present to Pharaoh about why he should let the Hebrews go. God said what he'd do to Pharaoh if he didn't let the Hebrews go, and then he delivered the goods empirically, reliably, predictably, and repeatedly until Pharaoh got the message unequivocally. Now, if you're a fan of this channel and you know my work here, I'm going to ask you for safety's sake to take a seat for the rest of this video because I find myself in agreement with some other folks who generally get nothing but contempt from me here. I just don't want to surprise you, knocking you off balance. For instance, here's someone I agree with wholeheartedly on this particular point. I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, I, I don't think that there is anything implausible about miracles if God exists. My dear friend Bill, for whom I have the most respect is exactly right. If God exists, there is nothing implausible about miracles, nor should they be rare when that's exactly how God behaved in the past, in both testaments, especially when Jesus told his followers that they would have access to his supernatural powers. With just the slightest bit of faith, greater works, Jesus said, that's what he told believers they'd be doing. Two or more gathered together would be able to ask for anything in Jesus' name and get it. That's the claim God made in the person of Jesus. So let's do the math. Jesus performed 34 miracles in just three years. That's basically 11.3 miracles per year, all of them completely demonstrable and evident to everyone present. If the current followers of Jesus were doing greater works than he did, as Jesus said they'd do, if they had only the faith the size of a mustard seed, they'd be doing at least 12 demonstrable evident miracles per year, each Christian. Even if just half of Christians in the world have enough faith to do things like cast a tree into the sea, or ocean if you're living near one, 
or say to a mountain, move from here to there. We should have a minimum of 12 billion demonstrable, clearly evident miracles per year. And remember, Jesus said, nothing will be impossible for you. None of this is implausible if God exists and Jesus was who he claimed to be. God. If for some reason you've, you've gotten up, please sit back down because here's another person from the other team with whom I find myself in complete agreement. My dear friend J-Dubs, cold case detective and Christian apologist J. Warner Wallace. What is happening here? What I was so intrigued by was the evidential nature of Jesus. The fact that he would always come into a city and provide evidence for belief and then preach behind that evidence. So for example, he would say often in the Gospel of John, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, at least believe on the evidence of the miracles I've offered you. God doesn't hint, he doesn't suggest, he doesn't claim, and he certainly doesn't argue. What does he do, J-Dubs? Always come into a city and provide evidence for belief. And what? According to you and Jesus constitutes solid evidence so the people can believe? Believe on the evidence of the miracles I've offered you. My good buddy J-Dubs is right. God and Jesus provide evidence for belief in the form of miracles. Done right there and then in real time. Not simply the reports of miracles from another time and place. That's the way they've always done it. My dear friend Lobar Bill is also right. If God exists, miracles are not implausible. Just the opposite. They should be abundant. Still, right here, right now. But Jesus? Well, he was dead wrong. Despite telling his followers that they'd have access to his supernatural powers, gathering together and getting anything they ask for in his holy name, they can't do a damned thing. So that is why I say there's no evidence whatsoever. Once again, I'm me. Thanks for watching.